One who studies Mesopotamian cities of the 3rd millennium BC finds an ever-evolving relationship between the E, the house of the city's patron god or goddess, and the Egal, the great house or house of the ruler. A dance of two competing but dependent ruling institutions, both vying for greater control, but both requiring the other to fully rule. The E was already an ancient institution by the 3rd millennium BC. The institution had controlled the temple complexes of cities like Uruk, storing and dividing out grain along with presiding over the rights of the people. The temple was central to Mesopotamian culture of the early Bronze Age. Around the temple cities grew. The temples handled plenty and famine, developing writing to account for the goods of the people and gods. But as society proceeded into the 3rd millennium BC, select families and individuals grew ever stronger and richer than the rest. As cities grew, agricultural land between them grew scarce. Conflict arose over the agricultural land. Before battle was met, cities would elect one among them who was skilled at leading and war to lead the city into battle. Over time, these leaders retained more and more power after each conflict, even establishing dynasties. These leaders had great palaces built that surpassed all but the temples in grandeur and might. Around these new kings arose a martial class, skilled at war and set wholly on it. These kings, the martial class, and the palaces formed the Egal, or Great House, a ruling body for war and civil control. Contention must have arose between the E and the Egal, with the E losing military and some civil control to the Egal. Despite the clash, or maybe because of it, the two households began to harmonize as to rule efficiently and effectively. War was often described as being a dispute between the gods or goddesses of the evolved cities. A war between Lagash and Uma was described as the cities fighting in the dispute between their gods Nigishu and Sara, respectively. To commemorate the victory of Lagash during the same war, the Stella of the Vultures, a standing stone recording the event in picture and writing was made. One face depicts Ienantum, king of Lagash, leading his troops against Uma, while the other side, Nigishu, their god, is depicted drawing in the bodies of defeated Uma with a net, but both the E and the Egal were depicted separate, though working for the same end. A later king of Lagash, Ur in Inanga, an usurper, declared all that had been controlled by the Egal to be the property of the god Nigishu and the goddess Bao, Nigishu's wife, ending taxes to the Egal and giving it all to the E, or household of the god. But it wasn't really the Egal taking over the E. The king was the new steward of the E, having divine favor of the god, while the Imi, house of the wife of the ruler, was renamed Ibao, house of the goddess Bao. With the act, Ur Inama and his wife began to rule the estates of the god and goddess of the city. Other kings followed suit, and the two houses became one in cities all about Mesopotamia. One ruler, Nerim Sin, even declared himself a god by depicting himself as one in a merging of the ideas of the Stella of the Vulture. But most kings would not take their merging to such extremes. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe. A few sources and other resources may be found in the description below.